who I am first, regardless of the comedian and Comedy Central and all the rest of that. I am a um, 48 year old black man that used to be a very bad individual in the streets. So if you look my story up, I did six years in prison, incarcerated for being a street pharmaceutical where it was a very frowned upon. You got one that is very frowned upon. So I was a bad kid in school, very bad. I got expelled twice. And the reason you get expelled twice is you go back to school and still try to go through it. So today, just give y'all a heads up about why I'm here today. I did not want to come here today at all. Being, just being, being honest. Didn't want to come. I was supposed to come before and I canceled. Remember? Did y'all remember? I canceled. I canceled because I had a TV gig. I had to go somewhere to do. So I had to, y'all, if some more people come here, we wait on We wait some people? No, we're, we're done. Okay, we're done. Well, I don't I don't start with the people say, hey, how you doing? You good? Hey, how you doing? I'm out of this. I'm out of this. How you doing? Okay. So, I was going to call, and I did not. I need everybody to just go get up. I don't need mean, nobody looking over there. Matter of fact, I don't want no more movement over there. They, they, they take the span short anyway. Come on in. Come on. I'm not, not going to keep starting over. I need everybody to be in here when I get here. Come on. Come on in, down this way. Nobody in the back. I want everybody to come this way. Come this way. Come on over. They, they miss who's who? They yours, they yours. I see you stand up, you get my food. It's okay. We got you. Bring those things up here by you. Come on up here by her.
What's your name, sister? What's your name again? Alita. That's what you say? I can't hit you in the ass. What's what is again, sister? Alicia. Okay. Alicia. What you doing next year? You graduate this year. What you doing next year? I need y'all to be listening. I'm coming to you. You're going to have to ask. I see this is a, this is an interactive show, but you're going to have to ask me questions. I got to make sure you listen. Because, see, I didn't come to talk to deaf ears. Because I, I, I've been y'all before. I've been y'all before. I used to not listen at all. You know what happened? I went to Texas Southern University. What? Went to Texas, I went to TSU. Um, and my mother is a history professor at Texas Southern University. I went to Texas Southern University, and in 1991, the fans came to Texas Southern University and escorted me through the building of the college. And let me tell you how embarrassing this was. See, there's two things you find out in life. Just because somebody's in college doesn't mean that they got good observation skills. Because I'm walking through a historic with that kind of handcuffs on, and my friend said, hey man, are you coming to class? <laughs> I said, not for a while. <laughs> which, which is the truth. You know what the embarrassing part though? My mother was coming in to work. My mother's a history professor at Texas Southern University still to this day. I'm coming out with the feds. My mother's coming in to work. And she walking her briefcase and she looking at me like she don't know me. She like. <laughs> and I'm trying to mouth to my mom. I said, and my mama said, <laughs> I was in prison from night to, from the time I was 19 years old to the time I was 25 years old. And when I got, when I was getting released, the, the, the officer asked me, now you getting released, what are you gonna do? Because I've sat in a place for six years and did I acclimate myself to go back into a free society to be better. You have sat in this place for four years some of y'all longer. But are you acclimated to go into the world? Because the, the real work starts when you're not being taken care of. Yeah. When somebody's not responsible for you anymore. When somebody has to push you to do better for your own self. This is a, this is a, this is a crazy thing. If somebody has to make you want to do good for yourself. And I know I'm, in here, I'm not talking to everybody. I'm just talking to the people who may listen. Because I was the same way. I used to sit in rooms. I went to Scared Straight. I went to all these places. I used to sit in rooms and act like I was in the I used to do it. And then I was in the penitentiary. And I had, for some reason, I wanted to listen. <laughs> when, I, when my mom was behind, when I was behind the glass, my mom was on one side of the glass, I'm on this side of the glass, and she, everything she telling me, I'm like, hey, I need to hear it now. Because I'm in a position. Some of y'all are in positions that you may not know how to get out of. But if you don't listen to people, you'll never know. The teachers in here, like this, this is, you know, a lot of people been scammed lately. You know that? A lot of people been scammed. Trying to, trying to come up quick. You give me $500 for your passcode, I can make it happen for you. Um, you, you, you know, so you so lucky. Today, I saw you on Instagram. I'm going to send you $200. All you got to do is send me, send me this. And a lot of y'all are fall for it. You say, man, you shouldn't go ahead and go, but people get rich out of this. People get rich off to my friend trying to, trying to come up. He, yesterday, I didn't even understand the logic in it. He said that somebody sent him, hey, I'm going to send you a passcode. You send it back to me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to send you 200 hours. He in the middle of doing something. He ain't paying attention. Then all of a sudden, his Instagram get hacked. And I put on his Instagram. I said, boy, that 500 hours 
really baited you in, didn't he? And he's like, he called me and said, man, I got hacked because I wasn't paying attention. And y'all be saying, like a man who eating, who eating candy, he ain't paying attention. He, 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 he smacking and trying to call attention because it's a diversion, so you won't pay attention. You got to see how people do things to make something happen so you won't pay attention to the information that you need. I used to be that kid. This is how I understand it. I used to, this is why I got trouble about because I used to be him. Hey, man, listen. This man up there talking. He up there talking. We got to listen to him for. But the man that's talking to you hasn't had a job since... 1999. I got out of prison in 1997. I was homeless for 1997, 1998. Then I got a job in 1998. Um, 1999, in the middle of 1999, October, I quit my job because I was getting ready to go on Comic View. I got on Comic View in 2000. I had, I've been on TV from 2000 to 2021 every year since 1999. I've made about $300,000 a year in residual income that I don't even think about. That I don't even think about. I don't even think about. You know how? Because I listened to somebody tell me, hey man, if you do these steps right here, you can make it. When I was selling drugs, I started selling drugs at 14. I got busted at 19. When they busted, I had $92,000 on my person. When they, when only your person in your pocket. Only your on person when they busted me. I had maybe about $400,000 buried in my mother's backyard um, at that time. My attorney cost me $100,000. The Fed seized $200,000. I used to didn't, I used to didn't sleep well when I was hustling. I make way more money now, and I sleep very well. I have nine children. <laughs> this is it. I have nine children. Twenty-eight years old. Twenty-eight. Twenty-three. Twenty-eight. Twenty-three. Those are my. Those are my first two children. One is a boxer, and then my daughter is the second in command chef at James Hard Restaurant, 13. I put her through, I put her through culinary school, but you know something? I used to go get my daughter every day from school. I used to pick up from school every day, take her to school every day. When she, got, when she got middle school, pressure has started to set on her from other black children. Because my daughter speaks multiple languages, she's been a lot of places, and she had a father. My daughter used to act like I wasn't her father because she was embarrassed to have a father. Because the rest of the kids around her didn't have fathers. So they used to tease her, oh, you got your dad. And I, I asked my daughter, I said, why, why are you ashamed to have no father? Because the rest of the kids don't have fathers. So you rather act like them than act like what you were. Say yeah. Because it was a shame to me that I had a father and they didn't use that everything. I was the P I was the president of the PTA, I was that school, I would do all the goofy father stuff, showing up to school with your lunch when you, when you did your lunch, I'm showing up. I'm doing all the stuff that I didn't have. Because I grew up without a father. So when you grow up without something, you want it. You want it, you want something that, that just that simple, a father, just to say, hey, I'm going to talk to you. I got something to talk to you about. So what I decided to do was be a father to the whole seventh grade class. Eighth grade class. Ninth grade class until she graduated. I was father to the school. Y'all don't understand. Y'all are important to me 
because I have children that's your age. So I have nine kids. I just told you about two. Just told you about two. We haven't missed, we haven't missed a meal. We haven't wanted for anything. You are important to me because I need you to have the same benefits that my kids have. I need you to have the same benefits that I had. And the benefit was knowing that mental fortitude is going to get you through whatever I ask you. I still ask you, what is next? And you still ain't gave me no answer. I ain't forgot. I asked you, you was graduating. You still ain't really gave me no solid answer. Because when you don't know what you're doing, this is what you look like when you don't know what you're doing. Why am I even, and you ask yourself, why do we bring people into schools to talk when you got so many teachers and principals and coaches and all that. Why is it a necessity for somebody else to come in and talk to you? About what? That's a question. I'm asking y'all. That's a question. What's the answer? Anybody. Anybody. It don't even matter. Anybody. What's the answer to that? I, do I start pointing to people? Because I'm going to ask you anyway. Big dog, what's, what's the answer to that? You know? If you don't know this thing, you don't know. That's cool. You don't know cool. What's the Spanish friend? What's the question again? I knew you didn't. I knew you wasn't listening. You, then how you gonna ask the question I just asked? How you gonna ask me what the question was? You was, you had, you had, you had drifted off for that bit. I saw in your eyes while I walked over here. I watched everything. I, you know, even though I, even though I got busted, I went back to school. I graduated from Texas Southern University as well, so I just want to throw that back out there. So I got it. Back to you. Um, nice genius. Um, what? Would you listen to when I was talking? Like for real. What would you do? But you were still on my kids. Y'all were still on my kids? So, okay, let's go back to it. Let's go back to it. Tell me what's the importance about that. Did I say I got nine kids? What's the importance? How many, how many baby moms? Good. I have no baby moms. Period. I've been married twice. I have no baby mamas. That's disrespectful. A woman that you have a child by is your child's mother. It's not she ain't your baby mama. Let's get her. I've been married twice. I've had children by my wives. You just like you more concerned than me about how you hear you a teacher, you gotta do this. Who 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 asked you that? Who asked you? That? Oh, see, you on the lies. The lies. Come back to what I was saying. Don't, don't focus on that. Tell me why. Bro. Why do they have to have people come in here and talk to y'all? Huh? So you can know the reality. It's a good answer, bro. You want to. See, man. Why do they have to have people come talk to y'all? Why do they have to have people to come in here and talk to you when there's so many other influences in here? You're not talking right now. Y'all go ahead. You didn't have to go, he was stacked. Go ahead. You probably been through something that you didn't know. You probably been through something that you didn't know. And then the teachers and the principals and everybody here, they haven't been through anything. And they got to bring other people in. Okay. My man right here. Why do you think they got to bring other people in? Yes, you, sir. Why do you think, what's up? Is why they got to bring other people in and talk to y'all. The kids aren't going to listen to the teachers. Who are the kids going to listen to? Now I'm, ask, I'm asking the question. Who influences you? Excuse me, let me slide from here. Who influences you? Because I got to know these questions in order to, um, you got, in order to know how to give a prescription to somebody, you have to know what they listen to and what they say this is. Question. Who, ma'am, on the phone? You on the phone. Oh. Who do y'all listen to? Like, who is your influence? Like, like, period. Like, who's your influence? Period. You say who? Young boy, young boy who? Young boy fresh? Hold on, man. I'm asking what, who is it? You say young boy, young boy, okay. Who influences y'all? What you say, Polo? Your tea lady? Boy, that's, boy, boy, that's, um, boy, you took me back, um, no, that's free, you took me back, um, I haven't heard T-Lady 
says my uncle. My uncle used to call my grandmother that his too late. How you an old head? How are you? How are you? You an old soul? Yo, <laughs> oh, Sarah. <laughs> well, you broke it down with that. How old are you, sir? You 18. You old spirit. Gotcha. I'm 48. Oh, crazy. I'm 248. Look like. When you take care of yourself, this is what 48 look like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How y'all got to go? How you got to go? You said 30? I look younger than most of y'all. Look at my look I got the young, I got the young school face. Man, I look definitely look younger than you. I definitely look. Well, you look, you look 36 years old. Why look way over here? Hey, look at my skin. First of all, I don't look younger than you. I don't look younger than you. Look, 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 who my influence like when? Like now or then when I was younger? Right now? Nobody influences me now but me. I'm back, I'm 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 48. I'm not in, I'm not in, I'm not influenced anymore because my I have already picked my teachers. You know what I'm saying? So it's I don't have a new influence because my teachers, people who I choose to take information from have already been cemented. I only talk to people who are intelligent. I don't have time to talk to people who are fools. I don't have time to even make sense of nonsense. Because some, a lot of things that, that permeates in your mind are nonsense, and that's what you think about all day. So when you wake up, I'm gonna ask one, I'm gonna ask two people. And be honest, this is what about being candy. When you get up in the morning, first thing on your on your brain, when you get up in the morning, first thing. That's rough, huh? When you wake up in the morning, what are your first thoughts? Hold on, wait a minute. What's, what is it about? How you gonna go get it? So, what grade you in? Uh, 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 listen, this, I want everybody to listen. I want, see, you can laugh, but you're not listening because you gotta listen to rationalize what somebody's saying. And a lot of times, you don't listen. Even if you don't listen until you put in a position. And that's when you not start. How many athletes are in here? How many athletes are in there? All athletes. All athletes. So let me explain something to athletes. So do you start training the day of the game or you train before the game? Before the game, right? Do you not listen to your coach or you just go out there and do the game like you want to do? Athletes, I need you talking. Athletes. Because y'all try to play this game. As an athlete, do you go on the field and tell the coach you're going to do it like you want to do it, or do you run the play and he ask you to run? So I'm trying to understand, athletes, how in, how are you, athletes, how are you in here? How are you in here? How are you not understanding that you got, if you don't graduate or not, how are you an athlete and you playing the game after the game is started. Athletes. So what successful athlete, what successful athlete that you model yourself after that do that? Deion Sanders, Jerry Rice, Kobe, Jordan, Magic, who? What athlete do you model yourself after that decide to say, I'm going to start playing the game once the game is already going? Let's go back to something else. The first two years that the Texans ever made the playoffs, the first two years they ever made the playoffs, you know who gave them, you know who gave them the talk at the end training camp? Me. 
U of H has went to the went to the orange pole a couple years ago. If you ask a coach who talked to them before they went to the orange bowl and told them, hey, if you listen to me, you will go to the orange bowl. You'll get a bowl this year. They lost one game that year. You know what the talk was about? Paying attention to detail. I did. I gave, I gave them the talk. It's a college, it's a college that just won their first little session. You know why they, why they called? It asked me to come talk because when Kubiak asked me to come talk to the Texas, then Coach Applewood asked me to come talk to the U of H. And ever since then, people have asked me to come talk to their athletes, to come talk to them about paying attention to detail. Because this is how, this how, this how your mind works. Who played football? You make, you make one person play football. Hold on, me and you, me and you into it all day today. We're going to talk all day. What position you play? What position you play? Offensive tackle. What you supposed to do? What's your job? As an offensive tackle. Protect your who? I mean, you're going to have to announce that because I know you talk about that. Protect my inside gun. Bam! Protect it. And how you do that? You can't make no mistake. You can't hold the other person. You can't. You got, to, got to have your hands open like that, right? Yeah. Give me the details. Thank you. Give me the details. Do you understand somebody being called for holding if they've been playing the same position since Pac won? But do you understand it though? You like, why are you holding? Because the dude you want to be a dog. Huh? The dude you want to be a dog, you got to hold. So you got to cheat? Yeah. And dog versus but see, watch this. But when your coach teaches you technique, oh, technique don't matter when it's a dog. You, when you're going against somebody who's better than you, is he, are they better than you? you are you playing him now? Have you ever played him? In your, you play it in your head. So you're not playing in reality. You play it you play in your head. You got to play the person that's in front of you. You can't play him because he's not on the team that you're playing against. You got to play the person that's in front of you. So as not just athletes, I don't understand this new breed of athlete that don't study. Everything's about the team. Everything's about technique. Everything about the scene, what you don't know, what's in. I'm an athlete. And it's one thing that athletes know that this. Have you ever, had your coach ever been okay with you making a mistake? And you practice. How do you make a mistake when you practice? Not when you practice. Not when you practice. Not when you practice. That's what practice is for, to make mistakes. No, practice is for making mistakes, not the game. Everybody, Everybody has told you that. You make mistakes in practice. This is where, in, class, in the classroom, your teacher does not train you to make a mistake when you take a test. She don't train you for that. And she don't understand it when you know it. What's two plus two? Oh. How the hell are you gonna make a mistake when you know it? <laughs> no matter how you see it, it's gonna be the same. You're trying to you trying to rationalize against somebody who's already been down this road. Think about it. Think about it. You get caught caught mistakes are costly. And that's why you're here. They bring people in so you won't make mistakes. But the vast majority of people are not going to listen. You know what my daughter has always made a mistake? Because then she trying to argue with somebody who's already lived. When she stopped doing that, now she's a chef. Because she's trying to go against the grain. Just like what I used to do. I used to be trying to rationalize with people who were better than me and who knew more than me. I used to try to rationalize with them. I would argue with people who had the information versus me.
And that's what you do. You sit there and you argue with these people, and you come in here like you know. No coach has ever told you it was okay to make a mistake, because not my coaches. Hey Amen. You practice. You know what a number two play is. Why are you running a four? Matter of fact, come on, sit down. I would be so far on the end of the bench, I couldn't even see the team. And then when I, when I decided to get my thing together, I was starting to point guard. Because coach can count on me. Because I wasn't the person out there making mistakes. Because we practice. And what you don't want to do is put in the work to practice to be perfect. Because people will tell you, ain't no people perfect. Ain't no perfect people. When I'm on stage, I make no mistakes. I know what I'm doing. I, nobody has ever came to a comedy show with me in one day Monday because I'm up there perfect. Perfect. And you can tell, because sir, let me tell you, see, I, I already know, let me tell you why the fact that I know what I'm coming into when I come to schools like this. And I say it just like this, schools like this. Yeah, the same kind of school I went to. Where they have to bring people in to talk to us. And I always wonder why are they bringing, I got teachers here, I got principals here. Why do we have to bring people in? And I said to myself, because I'm being a nuisance. I'm being less than what they want me to be. And I gotta be honest with myself first before I can get any information. Am I in here acclimating myself to what the school is instead of what I should be? Like my daughter did and she was embarrassed by having a father. Do I not, do I not listen to information because it's against what I have been taught? Do I want to be, do I want to be a disruptor when I can look at somebody who's way more successful than me and I, do I play the game in my head or do I play the game that's in front of me? I can't play this, I can't play from the position that I'm not in. Somebody said, oh, he got he got nine kids. He must got a bunch of baby moms. It's depending on what you're looking at. I got two ex-wives. That's what that's what I have. That's what I have. I used to be, I used to be a person that would not listen to nobody because I thought I know. I knew. But how do you know? At 18, because somebody told me I was grown at 18. I know that's not, I know that's not the truth. I know that's not the truth. I'm not even grown. I'm not, my, my grown thoughts kicked in around 25. Around 25. And right now, you at 18, 19, 17, 16, feel like you're grown a little bit. And can't nobody tell you nothing. But that's okay. Can nobody tell you nothing? Why would you be a hero? having to have somebody talk to you about something or some energy that you may be lacking. Because sometimes you get coddled and you get people who defend you. You get people who defend you in your wrong. Oh, this makes sense for you to do. This makes this, this makes that. I'm not even harping on you. I'm trying to, because this, this is not going to be my first talk with y'all. So this is the setup talk. I'm going to be back three, four, five more times before you even graduate, back, right back here. Hey, where we at? What you doing? What's the next step of the graduation? Because I don't challenge you from the outside because they're challenging you here already. You're not responding to the challenge. Like I used to not be. I used to be respond to the challenge. And if somebody said something to me, that was the best thing they ever said, which the worst and the best. They told me I could not. They didn't believe it. Told me to my face. You will not be successful in this world. To my face. And I took it to offense. What you mean? You don't have the work thought. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the mental capacity. You don't have the understanding. You don't have the knowledge. You don't have the cognitive in the field, the individual skills. You don't have the thought pattern in order to be successful in this society. Deal with it. 
Just like that. And you know what's crazy? When I just said that, one person's eyes moved. Because in their mind, they're like, what? Because they heard. You got all the person's eyes moved. Why your eyes move? Somebody said that to you before? Somebody feel like that towards you before? Why your eyes move? <laughs> you were shocked that somebody was saying it to a kid? Because you did like you like, what happened? Because see, I'm a person who watch, I watch body language. So I know who to actually talk to. When I'm talking, I, I pay attention. I know when somebody's listening, I know somebody may fall. But I'm not talking to everybody, know who I care to. You only talk to the people who can listen. It's gonna be one person that's gonna say, you know something? Mistakes don't have to be made if you practice. Mistakes don't have to be made if you listen. I got one time this brother or any of these teachers came and said, you know something? I'm gonna teach you something, but I know you're not gonna get it. No teacher does that. They teach us. They come to teach you, and they take it more offensive when you don't get what I'm trying to get. Body language. You thought you were going to come in and you were going to laugh. But it's hard. It's hard to laugh about things when I've still got to understand who you are first. See, the audience, when I, come to, when I come to the improv, I come to the arena, I come to the NLG, I already know who these people are. I know who, what they come in here. I, I come see, but, this, but this is way more important because you cannot, I, I don't even feel right because of the position that we're in, because I used to be, I'm sitting there looking at what I used to be, and, and I don't want you to go down the road that I was, my road was hard, because I didn't listen. And I used to sit in rooms like this and not pay attention. For the only reason, because I didn't want people to know around me that I was paying attention, or that I was hurt, or that I didn't have something, or I was insufficient. Or I didn't do, or I, I felt a certain, certain type of way. Feel free to talk to me after this, but I'll tell you how to deal with most of the things that you may be going through. A lot of y'all mindset is around not being perfect. And to show life, your life, is, your life can be perfectly fine if you affirmate yourself. Athletes, I'm still on y'all, because I'm going to know. What's after high school? You going to the league? You coaching? What's the next thing, athletes? I'm still back to what's the next thing. After this, what's the next thing? College. Who? College. College. What college? Any college or a certain college? Until you get the money to go to college, until 
What? Huh? To build something. What's the song? Okay, build a business. Okay, I have two, I have two businesses and I have um, a, a, some property I just bought in South Park and I'm building a duplex. So build a duplex, that's why I want to do one building duplex for the, for the community so they can have good housing. Cost of labor went up, cost of lumber went up, cost of materials went up. Can't build a duplex right now. Because it's going to cost more to build it right now than it will be in like six months. What do, you, what do I do? Do I wait for six months or do I just pay the cost and I, and I pull the cost on to the, to the buyer? Wait for six months? You want to be a consultant to me? Huh? You ever thought about consulting? Well, I asked you some, I asked you a pressing question. You thought about it. You said, wait for six months. What if I don't want to wait for six months? Should I, should I put the funds in now and wait to get the money on the back end from the, from the buyer? Huh? I'm talking, we gotta talk, man. I'm talking. Open your mouth and talk. I'm trying to get some information for you. Huh? Yes? You see how this, this, this is how I think work. You see how this, I'm asking you questions, and I'm asking you real questions. Because I want a real answer from you. The communication is this. This is how you're doing it. You, you're talking to me over here instead of talking to me here. And this is how the mass majority of the young men here have addressed me to the side and off. Not, and it's not about nationality, it's about manhood. And it's not that you're not a man, it's you developing, and when you know when you're doing business or you're doing something with somebody, the conversation is here. The mass majority of us get in, in, in situations because of communication. If I was an officer, how would you be talking to me? Would you be talking to me the same way? <laughs> how would you be talking to me? You, you, how, if I stopped you, excuse me, young man, did you stop? How would you be talking? What would you communicate? What would you turn around? This, 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 come here, come here, I'm going to show you something. Because we, we go on everywhere. All this is points. If you listen to it. What you say, I'm not against you, I'm not against you. But watch this. 
，即係咩？四四百廿好似唔知，四百廿唔知講乜嘢嘅。Okay. This is this is my role manager and my security writer for 21 years. Dre, have you ever seen this, Dre? 21 years. My daughter was 23, so you get with me for my daughter. So, stand up. Just stand. Oh, oh, stand up, Dre. They want you to stand up too. He ain't that big. He'll look at. He'll look at. He's six two. He'll look at. Six two. Dre. Y'all ask me why I go lay poor on drugs. 
that they that they that they exploiting that they exploiting on Instagram. They using her mental they, her mental capacity. She not getting no money from that. So I sued I sued some people who put me who I was in a video with with South Park Show. I sued them for putting me in the video with her, even though she doesn't show because you exploiting that lady and you not giving her no money. That's the thing. They using that lady. And then this thing, who wants, I just, I just want to know, who goes to a city looking for the drug, the drug user in the city? So you, when you go to New York, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the landmark that you'd rather go see in New York? You want to go to Times Square. You go to LA, you want to go somewhere. In Houston, people want to come and see South Park Shawnee? You see, do you see how they want to represent you as a city? You want this is what you want to be represented as in the world as a crackhead doing it. <laughs> but in the intelligent conversation, you ask me about South Park Shorty, but you never ask me, do I know the master? That's the term. Or did or or any other other prominent people in this city. You didn't ask me, did I ever meet Barbara Jordan? Or Mickey Leland? Mm -hmm. Or did you know who those people are? <laughs> Some. Wow. Yeah, new baby white. But you want to ask me about the elderly white lady on, on the Golden Girl, but you don't want to ask me about Dick Gregory. Who is that? Mm. Or, or Shirley Chisholm. What's her name? What 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 she what is Shirley Chisholm doing? Shirley, but she don't know her last name is Chisholm. First black woman to ever run for president. Best, what about Bessie Cole? No, she was the first um, female pilot. Who? Female pilot. She's the first female pilot. What year? Um, about nineteen something. Nineteen what? Early twenties. No, I'm getting ready for that. Nineteen oh four. But that, that I'm glad you, I'm, I'm so, I'm so elated that you knew who Bessie Cole was. I don't remember I know her because my grandfather had told me the story about her. That's it. Grandfather told you a little story about the first black person. She's the first black person. Female. No, person. Not male or female, but she's the first black person to ever become an aviator. To fly. And she couldn't get into the and she, and she didn't do it in the US, she went to Europe and learned another language to become that. And she flew back over here. Not a big air heart. That's the call. But the vast majority of people don't know their history or what even made them great. Mickey Lever was a good person in this neighborhood. But I know, you probably know who Freddie Bach is. We don't know who Mickey Lever is. And that, this, this is back when I asked you about who were your influences. Who do you think about? What do you think about in the day? And these are things I gotta ask you because I need to know because I used to be this person that didn't think about anybody doing the day or anything. But what is, I want you to constantly think about what's the next step? You don't want to go to play, but you don't want to answer my question, what's the next step after this? No, after you leave school, what your life is going to, what you're trying to instruct your life to be. Uh, R N, good. Register to Let's start here. Let's start here. I'm still on the same point of this. The base of where you start things at. Athletes, you don't start. You don't start preparing for the game when the game is already gone. Students, you don't start preparing to be a student after you get out of school. Cause y'all gonna be in the street, not graduated. And still, I'm gonna go be an RN. You gonna start over? You gonna go to MBD class? What you gonna do? Start over? I need you, light skin, brother, right here with the, with the um, the Rick. What's your name, brother? You, right there. What's your name? Huh? Man, I'm not tired. Um, no, 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 no. You've been talking loud the whole time, so now I can struggle to hear you. I ain't got no hearing aids, nothing in my ears, man. What's, what's your name, brother? Bill Burr. No, what? Bill Burr. What's your name? <laughs> 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 you chill, Bill Lee. 
Noah Lee? Yeah. I don't believe, but I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> what's, your, what's your next step, Noah Lee? Are you graduating this year or are you doing something else? I'm graduating this year. You're graduating this year. Why the people around don't believe? You're 11th grade, 10th 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 grade, 10th
Because you, because you finna negotiate this. Yeah, no, just tell me who the people are. You never buy what from him again. Dead in the room, hustle again. I used to do that. I used to do that. That's the thing. Okay, so who graduated with you? So you negotiate with your class, with your people. Play like they don't want to learn. 
go, go, some, go somewhere, go to an environment like this, and don't want to be the number one because it's, it's, it's frowned upon to be excellent. My daughter was an honor roll student that was playing like she didn't have a father, which she did. I was a math, I am a mathematician. I know everything about math. But I chose to take my mathematical skills and go into math and chemistry at the same time. My sister, who's a genius, she did same household, same mother, same father. What was the difference between me and her? I'm in the streets trying to acclimate to be something that I'm actually not. I went to do told me, and then everybody around here hustled. My first question was, for what? My mama got a job. What I need to hustle for? Oh, you gonna need stuff. Like what? Sneakers became important to me for no apparent reason. Now I listen to people now talk about Jordans and the vintage Jordans. The dude challenged me one day and said, oh man, you got these shoes on your feet. The same shoes I got on right now. This man told me I got these cheap shoes on my feet. And he just got vintage J's on. I said, what? Yeah, he J got me two feet. He vintage, baby. I said, you wear a shoe that was $75 mm. when I wore it, when it came out. But now you stand in line, fighting, killing people, get up early to go get a shoe that's already out. And then you, and then you disrespected my shoes to say you got one cheap shoes because he got a bunch of shades. Everybody here been on the phone the whole time. Let me show you about, about privy, being privy to something. Sometimes you may not know what you're looking at. You may not know what you're looking at. Everybody that got a phone out right now. Look up Golden Goose. Look up Golden Goose. Pull it up. Look it up. Anybody, pull it up, look it up. Golden Goose. Have you ever heard of them? Golden Goose, have you ever heard of them? No, never heard of them, right? Pull it up. And tell me what it says. Tell me what the average shoe, a Golden Goose shoe costs. 530, a new shoe. Not an old shoe, a new shoe. But if you're not privy to it, you don't know what you're looking at. Look up my shoes, though. Look up these golden goose on the thing. Tell me how much they cost. But just think, the whole time, somebody would be judging me like that person was, saying, I got some cheap shoes. Because he's not privy. Huh? I, I let the man say whatever they cost, but I know what they, I know what I paid for. How much they are? Now, when you saw my shoes, you know, 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 no, he, he has to go to the loose soil. No, I don't go to the I go to the I go to the store. But guess what? Guess what? Go to the loose, go to the loose I got maybe 17 pairs of shoes. Go to the loose center. I don't have paper on them. So my son and I took that cheap shoe on that they're not privy even knowing about. Because what you concentrate on is Gucci, Louis, all that type of stuff. You concentrate on labels and names. But you get what you like. You don't have to be, you don't have to conform to somebody else. But then the point is, when you see something, because you are accustomed to certain things, you only judge it based on what you're accustomed to, not what you're privy to it. You ask me what kind of car I drive. Yeah. What's the what's the what's the importance in that? Because most people put their money in their vehicle. What you normally see is a person. I, when I'm shining, you looking at my vehicle. 
I walk next to people that when they walking down the street, when you driving down the street, not only are they not looking at their vehicle, they pointing to buildings and land that they own because they don't have to wear their wealth. And I'm explaining this to you because it's just because you see something. I intentionally did not wear any labels to this, to this place because I didn't want you to think that the words I said was important because I would have walked. If I would have walked in here, I would have put my necklaces on. I would have put my jewelry on. I would have came here with that Louis Vuitton sweatsuit on with the Christian Louis on. You'd be like, ooh, what he has to say is important. Most important person I ever talked to was a man that was sick with a t-shirt on and a pair of jeans. He was, in a, he was in a venue and I offered this man to buy him a drink. Because he was sitting next to me, we had a conversation, I offered him to buy him a drink. He said, no, nah, I'm not cool. Um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm good. We were sitting there talking. I said, man, what you do? He said, man, I invented the ATM machine. Yeah. I said, what? I said, what? He said, yeah, I'm the inventor of the ATM. Like every place that there's an ATM, I invented it. And then I'm thinking about he had on a t-shirt and jeans. And I asked him, I said, what kind of t-shirt is that? He told me the name of it. It looked like a regular t-shirt. And the man said, man, sometimes people don't know. He said, man, this, this t-shirt costs you $600. He said, but well, most people won't know, but my skin will. I said, what? He said, my skin will. I had on a $6 t-shirt. He said, feel good. And I said, wow. And I took that, I took that, and then when I let on, and this happened, let me tell you, this happened, and I'm gonna leave you this one, I want you to understand something. This happened maybe three months ago to me. I'm in the barbershop. And because I'm a successful person, I'm in the same, I go to the same barbershop shop they're always going to. So you know now you got people that come around you that that think that because you're successful, you're cat. Do I you say do I have hair? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I wore a cap today because my, my barber, my barber is going to miss tomorrow and I ain't going to come in and disrespect y'all out of the edge of I know one of y'all is going to say something about the edge of that being right. So, I'm sitting in the barbershop, last story, sitting in the barbershop getting my hair cut. A dude who used to know, he know me from the same neighborhood, he got that too because we ain't on two different levels. Come in, he said, man, what's up Hollywood? Anytime somebody call you Hollywood, it's really not a compliment. Because they, they being, being, you know, look, you know, underlying, don't shot. What's up, Hollywood? Yeah. Well, you think you all around here getting money? Yeah, I hear y'all on Matchball too. I hear you on the little radio, boy. I see you on TV, but you ain't the only one around here getting money, boy. I'm moving down to my socks, boy. Yeah, moving everything. So this is how you talking to me. Louis, everything, what? And my mom was sitting there saying, I was like, what's up, man? You don't, you don't feel like that? I said, no, nah, if I get up, if I get up, it's going to be that. He said, but I'm not going to get up because what he's saying doesn't make sense to me. And everybody in the I'm like, Lee, why you ain't saying, boy, you got plenty of money? I said, this ain't about my money, it's about him. I'm not going to give him my time. And then I say, why? I said, man, I am wealthy enough to know that Louis Vuitton don't make socks. <laughs> Louis Vuitton don't make socks. So sometimes people who have this image that you want, it's not that. You know how many people I, I know on Instagram that's not rich? But on Instagram, it look rich. You know how many celebrities that go to the 
that I've been to the Oscars, I've been to, I've, I'm Grammy nominated, I've been to all these things. You know how I many people, it's, it's a thing called Zaddy's. It's a diamond company, it's a fake diamond company that make all the jewelry for celebrities. So when you see them out and they shine, when they get robbed, it's nothing because you're, you're robbing nothing. You're robbing, you're taking something that's fake. And because of the look of things. When you don't know what you're looking at, you have to be able to see through the nonsense. In this climate, in this, in this decade, you are gonna have to be way better and see through the non see through the nonsense and stop putting value on things that really don't represent anything. You are the value. If you've never heard that before, you are the value. It's not about the clothes, it's not about the shoes. Because let me tell you something, these shoes will cost as much as they want to, but if they hurt your feet, it's not about how much they cost, it's about your feet being hurt. So understand this, in this life, you're gonna have to understand you are the value. And if you want more for yourself, value yourself 100%. Be, be valuable enough to learn. Be valuable enough to take in. Be valuable enough to not be a disappointment to yourself. Because you're the only one that will be disappointed. Just like I know when I disappoint myself. It's not an outward thing, it's an inward thing. I mean, you can do the best. And I'm letting you know what I'm about. Thank y'all for y'all time. Appreciate it. Teacher, you